Good evening, Mr. and Ms. Internet and all our ships at sea. It's Thursday, it is time once again for another Freeway Forum. Coming to you live and direct from the world famous 405 Freeway in beautiful, sunny Southern California. My name is Atari and this is a freeform discussion that is hosted by me, but it is driven by you. Yes, you friends, you and your comments are what make this show possible. So sit back, buckle up, and let's have us a good time. Now, of course, please, uh, if you're enjoying this, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to share this with all of your social media buddies on the Twitters and the Facebooks and the Snapchats and the Instagrams and the whatever else there is out there, even on the MySpaces. Uh, so we can get as many people in here as we can so we can have ourselves a rollicking good time. And on that note, so today is October 26. 26, 1026, 1985. Uh, was 110 in the morning, Twin Pines Mall, Hill Valley, California. Uh, which was actually, I think that was in like industry, but I'm not sure. But anyway, whatever. Uh, so in 1985, uh, October 26, 1985 was when uh, Doc Brown uh, supposedly debuted his uh, his time machine invention is his greatest invention. It took uh, 30 years and all of his life's for or his, his family's his entire his family's entire fortune to realize the uh, realize the the vision in his head. Uh, and he came up with the uh, with the time machine built into the uh, DeLorean DMC 12. And because uh, if you're gonna if you're gonna build a time machine out of a car, you might as well do it with some, something with a little bit of style, right? Plus the uh, the stainless steel construction makes the flux dispersal <gasps> look out. But anyway, I love how they just kind of hand wave that explanation away. Right? That was really very very clever. But uh, so that is today's topic. We're talking about uh, we're talking about time travel. Uh, we we are talking about where we where you where would you go? If you had a DeLorean that could travel through time and you hit 88 miles an hour, where would you end up? You're gonna go backwards, you're gonna go to the future, uh, you're gonna go back to the future. Uh, let me know in the doobly-doo, let me know in the comments below where you would go and, and why. Why would you wanna go there? Uh, so that is, uh, that is today's subject. Uh, <laughs> it can get heavy. <laughs> Weight has nothing to do with it. What is all this talk about heavy? What is, is there something wrong with the Earth's gravitational pull? Oh, uh, why is everything so heavy in the future? Oh, uh, clever, clever dear. Oh man. <coughs> so, um, I don't know, I'm, I, I, I'm kind of weird. I would, you know, I would take a, uh, I would take the DeLorean. I would, you know, you know, my first inkling is to go back 30 years uh, to the to the mid 80s. Well, I guess the late 80s at this point would be 87 uh, going back now. But uh, I would enjoy, I, I'd like to go back and just kind of uh, bask in the aesthetic of that era um, of the, uh, the uh, what was it, the, the, was the uh, Milan Design School and uh, with all the funky colors and shapes. Heck, I might even like to go back a little bit further, even into the 70s, and uh, kind of see what was going on back then. Because the 70s, you know, we, we see the 70s as like the disco era and that kind of stuff going on, but we don't really, you know, we don't really see like the full extent of the 70s. Of course, my parents, uh, you know, that was their heyday was the 70s, and uh, so they were very fond of it. So I'm kind of curious as to, to what uh, what all the fuss is about, you know. It was, uh, late 70s. Uh, Nixon was the mid 70s. And, uh, Nixon, Ford, Carter. Uh, Nixon, Ford, Carter. That rounded out the uh, that rounded out the 70s. So the end of really the end of the Apollo program. Uh, sort of this this era of uh, introspection. Uh, kind of like the era that we're in now. I, I feel like we're kind of reliving some of that, just from what I understand about that era. I would like to see kind of what's going on, what was going on then, what was going on with people then, and sort of, sort of 
figure out figure out ways that we can take that and we can apply that to our knowledge of of now, you know. And, and, uh, I don't know if I'd want to go to the future. Um, and of course, if the future was all cool and futuristic, like like it was in 2015, uh, that might be entertaining. But uh, I mean, the Back to the Future 2015, of course. Because the Back to the Future 2015 was far more entertaining than the uh, than the uh, the real 2015. But, uh, <coughs> pardon me. So uh, so yeah, where would where would you want to go? When when the hell are we? When would you go? Oh man. Springer says he'd go back and kidnap himself, then show. Uh, Sean, pass Sean all the stupid things to avoid. <laughs> that is a clever idea. Um, that is that's an interesting idea. Now, now the thing about uh, the thing about a running into yourself and b um, going back with the intent to change things. That's an interesting topic because that brings up like the grandfather paradox. Um, oh yeah, I definitely want to go back and like change some stupidity. Uh, <laughs> I would definitely. I would definitely be tempted to go back and change some of my stupid behaviors as a uh, as a, a teenager and a twenty-something. Uh, but uh, but yeah, that kind of brings up a little bit of the grandfather paradox about you know if you if you were to go back in time and change your own personal history uh, or even uh, some far-reaching event, uh, thus eliminating the motivation for you to travel back in time in the first place. Would you have actually done it, and what would be the cause of that? And so that's an interesting thought experiment. Uh, the idea is the, they call it the grandfather paradox uh, because if you were to say go back in time and kill your own grandfather, uh, thus you would never have been born. Uh, thus you could never have gone back in time to kill your own grandfather, and then you get in this like interesting little temporal loop. Um, now there are some that say that uh, just because of quantum mechanics, you can't actually do that, uh, which is also an interesting, uh, an interesting idea that that uh, there is some sort of uh, there is some sort of uh, thought that says that the past really is written uh, is written, including any interference that's already or. It's, it's written including any interference that has yet to happen that has already happened. So the idea that it is that uh, if time travel, if time travel were to become a thing at some point, uh, and then you know, somebody goes back in time and changes history, history has already been changed at this point. Um, so there is no actually changing history. So there's, there's this like quantum certainty uh, that that gets like written into you know into history so to speak. Um, so it's an interesting idea. So like the the funny thing you have to think of it like in terms of the Twilight Zone. Then like if you were to go back in time and attempt to change uh, your own yeah that's heavy thanks Barbie. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, like so if you were gonna go, to go back in time and actually change history um, the act of you changing history would uh, be setting up the events that led you to go back in time in the first place um, so it's it can be kind of a can be kind of a, a, a head job a little mind job there but uh, it, it can get very confusing very quickly I used to think about this stuff a lot as a kid uh, because back to the future was like, my movie that was like my thing that I watched all the time um, for my sister it was Forrest Gump and for me it was Back to the Future of course you know we're 10 years apart so you know, that makes sense you know the mid 80s mid 90s um, so uh, <laughs> it's an interesting uh, it's an interesting idea but yeah it, that movie really affected me as a kid and so I really really wanted to like really thought about it like I thought it was really cool by being all heady and thinking about time travel and all these different paradoxes and, and what could happen and what couldn't happen and, and quantum mechanics was not really a thing yet it was just barely becoming like this thing in popular science so uh, so uh, quantum uncertainty quantum mechanics quantum lock uh, that was all very much a uh, 
was very much in the, the realm of like bleeding edge physics at the time, which still kind of is. Um, so Barbie says she'd want to go into the future about 200 years, but she's afraid that she would bring back uh, viruses and bacteria that would be eradicated by that time. Uh, it's, a, it's an interesting idea to do that. Like, you know, that's, that's one of those realistic uh, kind of scenarios. Springer says uh, his friend was trying to explain to him once that time travel was possible, it would already be done. Yes. <laughs> I know, that's what I'm saying, like it's really heady. Like when you start like thinking about time travel and paradoxes and how they work and how like the, the mechanics of time travel would work and somebody is smoking some marijuana around here and I don't, that, it, it is extremely strong. Somebody is, is just token on the freeway. Um, that is, uh, wow, yeah, it is, uh, it is definitely some mind-blowing stuff. Maybe if we, uh, maybe if we sit in traffic long enough, we'll be like, whoa, like, whoa, real, whoa, you know, because of whoever is smoking the ganj uh, while they're driving. You know, that's my, that is my pet peeve right there, is, is driving under the influence, uh, even of marijuana. Marijuana is a downer. Um, it really should just be pretty much just like driving while intoxicated, uh, because you are somewhat intoxicated. I don't like the smell. It's kind of making me a little bit uh, right now. But um, anyway, so yeah, so that's that's where we are. So yeah, like time travel and paradoxes and things like that it gets gets really heavy. It gets it gets kind of mind blowing. Um, and and that's another really good uh, consideration, Barbie, um, with um, with diseases that may not actually exist yet, like, uh, little, little five, oh, yeah, little five o'clock cheat, yeah, <laughs> well, it seems like it, woo-wee, it is that town, oh, man, but anyway, so, so, um, Oh yeah, yeah. So, uh, so this idea of uh, this idea of uh, going into the future because you know viruses, bacteria, they, they evolve over time, they mutate, and you know the idea that um, you could be exposed to something that is commonplace, you know, like the, you know two centuries from now, equivalent of the common cold, but it's like black plague to us. You know, that's. That, that's that's actually an interesting idea. So going into the future can be actually very uh, very dangerous uh, in that in a realistic type sense. Uh, you would have to be decontaminated when you get back, and it's just you know, and you don't know if you're actually going to be decontaminated because you don't know if the contamination techniques here in this time period would work for those uh, superbugs. Um, hey, it's real quick, Chris says you'd like to go back in time and see something get discovered such as a tomb in Egypt that would be interesting like to be there with uh, to be there with uh, what's his name Howard Carver I believe was his name Dr. Carver uh, Dr. Carter Dr. I, I can't remember the the gentleman's name who who discovered uh, Tutankhamun's tomb uh, English fella uh, I believe it was, Car it was Carver or Carter and I, I can't remember his name on top of my head but uh, that would be really cool, like to be there at that eureka moment, at that moment of discovery. Like to be there, uh, like to be hanging out with with Albert Einstein when he like came up with the theory of relativity. That's an that's an interesting uh, interesting place to be. To be, uh, I would love, I would love. Speaking of like scientific achievements and things like that, I would love to go back in time and uh, to. Uh, June 20, 1969, and watch the moon landing. I'd love to be at uh, at Mission Control, at NASA, uh, there as Buzz and Neil are descending the stairs on the lunar lander. That would be epic. Like, that would be amazing. I'm wearing my NASA socks today, by the way, so I just kind of thought of that. But uh, I haven't taken a picture of my NASA socks today. I, I wore NASA socks yet. I actually have a pack of NASA socks that I got from Walmart. I, I take pictures of all the new socks I get and I post them on social media. Like that's, that's sort of one of those weird things that I do. 
that people are like, ah, those are cool socks, you know. I've created monsters. Uh, <laughs> I've created monsters with socks. Uh, like, I've gotten my friends really into socks, into the fancy socks. Uh, my buddy Adam, he, he's kind of like, you know, he's kind of a straight and narrow guy, but uh, when uh, when he got married, I, uh, <laughs> I I brought all my cool socks. I brought all my fancy socks with me uh, because I'm, you know, I'm going home and I'm going to wear fancy socks everywhere I go. Uh, we're going home, going back to visit, whatever. Uh, and uh, <laughs> so, so I brought my fancy socks and his bride to be. I showed her my fancy socks and she's like, "Oh my God, you're wearing those for the wedding." <laughs> I'm like, "I got enough for everybody." <laughs> So, uh, so yeah, that was like a last minute decision by the bride to be. She was like, no, you're wearing those socks, period. <laughs> and uh, so, so I bought Adam, I bought Adam a, a pair of socks and, uh, and I, I brought enough, uh, enough that everybody had a, had a goofy pair of socks. And, and we had pictures with the goofy socks and the fancy socks. And had a good time. It was, it was fun. So like, that's, that's sort of my like thing is, is the, the fancy socks. Uh, I like my fancy socks. I'll be posting pictures of my fancy socks here in a minute. Or, not right now, but later. Next, over the next few weeks, I'll, I'll be wearing new socks and posting pictures. But anyway, I digress. <laughs> talking about socks now. But, um, so yeah, that would be, that would actually be really cool, like, to go and, like, be there at the Eureka moment uh, for something big. Uh, like, the discovery of, you know, something lost to the ages, or, or uh, being on one of those old, uh, one of those old sailing ships, at the discovery of, of a new world, of the new world, you know, uh, that would be uh, that would be intense. I would I would enjoy that or to be uh, you know, to be there in Mission Control during Apollo 13. Oh my gosh, it's a nail biter. You like like you know they're going to survive as long as you just keep your mouth shut. And don't interact with anything. Like, don't don't mess with anything. You know they're gonna survive. It's like watching the movie, and it's like, you know. But uh, well, <laughs> that's uh, you know, that's another interesting thing. I was talking. What was I talking about now? Uh, oh yeah, the the whole idea of of like pathogens, and like that's another thing about going back in time too. Especially if you go far enough back. The, the diseases we have now have mutated in such a way that people from back then would not have any sort of uh, antibodies to them. So that would be, uh, be interesting. <laughs> oh, Matt, Matt, you didn't miss much. We're just talking about where we would go, um, where we would go if we had the uh, if we had the the DeLorean, if we had Doc Brown's DeLorean time machine. Where would we go? backwards, forwards, uh, where would you go, why, what would you want to do? That's that's what we're talking about. Welcome, by the way, welcome in. Uh, if you're uh, if you're in the comments section, my buddy Matt, he's uh, he's actually starting a, a YouTube channel at some point in the future. Um, and uh, I, I, I'm curious, I need, Matt, I need you to link me, uh, send me a message with your, with your YouTube channel, because you have a YouTube channel, because you have a YouTube profile. Uh, so there is a channel there. So even if you don't have anything there, just send it to me, and when you get stuff up there, we'll look at it and, and do cool stuff. But uh, anyway, so uh, so Matt there, he's starting a, a cool channel and a cool idea. He's got a cool concept. We were talking about that a while ago, um, and I think it's uh, I think it's gonna be interesting. But anyway, I digress. So yeah, where would you go? Where would you want to go? Uh, forwards or backwards in time? Go to a point in time. Chris says you would want to go to a point in time when something was lost that today we still have not yet found. Ooh, wow, that's philosophical. I kind of like that. So going back, like, to the burning of the library in Alexandria, like when the library was lost, uh, going back to that point. Yeah, <laughs> Atlantis, there you go, Barbie. Yes, yes, like Atlantis, if Atlantis actually existed. Um, Well, that's fine. It, it, you know, th that's the thing with YouTube. And if you if you want it to be a different name, that's fine. Be, be under a different name. That's that's entirely cool. We can do that. Uh, we'll talk about that later, though. We won't. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Email me the details. Email me the details. And 
or message me or whatever. You know how to get a hold of me. Anyway, so um, yeah, like going like to the sinking of Atlantis or to the burning of the Library of Alexandria. Though that would be interesting. I would, I would actually, I would go, I would go you one further though, and and um, before like the burning of the library, going back and like copying everything, like bring um, bring a smartphone and a few batteries. And uh, and use the, the the Google scan feature, the Google Photos scan feature, and uh, just copy every freaking scroll that's in that library. Uh, <laughs> copy it all down so so scholars can have it, and uh, and then they can burn it, and then we can look at it later and see what's going on. And then I'll be like, Where did you get this? This is all fake. Be like, No, this is real. I used a time machine. And they'll be like, No nonsense. There's no such thing as time machines. Like, actually, in this little scroll, it says it's possible. And I start looking at it, looking at it, looking at it. By golly, he's right! There is such a thing as time travel. They discovered it 2,000 years ago! It looks like a phone booth! There's two teenage losers coming out of it. Long hair. And it looks like they are strumming guitars. I don't know about that. Oh, and there's one with a man with a very long scarf. Another phone booth. They must have had phone booths all over the place. Yes, I love how, like, phone booths are, are a time travel thing. All right. So we're, we're, we're coming up on, we're coming up on sponsor curve here. Uh, I don't actually have a sponsor, but I am going to say, uh, if, uh, if you want to support this, by all means, absolutely, uh, click the little subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, share this with your friends. Of course, everything is also available at airbornesurfer.com.com.com.com. .com .com .com. Airborne Surfer. Anyway, airbornesurfer.com has all the cool stuff that, uh, that I produce, uh, and there's also the Facebook page. Um, so sign up there, uh, like the Facebook page, subscribe here, tell your friends. Cool times, good times. And if you want to support what I do here, uh, airborneserver.com, there is the Amazon link up in the right-hand corner. Click on that next time you go shop on Amazon. Doesn't charge you anything more, doesn't cost you a penny extra, but uh, but it's an affiliate link and I get a little bit of a, uh, I get a little bit of a kickback from that. Uh, also, uh, affiliate links down in the doobly-doo. Uh, next time you go shopping on Amazon, click one of those. You don't have to buy what I've linked, but uh, anything that you do buy on Amazon, see a little bit of a uh, a little bit of a commission just from their uh, from their marketing budget and uh, that helps support what I do here so fantastic anyway so back on with the show so uh, Chris you were saying something about um, let's see let me go back give me a second here I'm waiting until I actually stop before I look at this but up 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 but uh Matt says he wants to go back and learn the actual real recipe for Roman concrete that we've still been, never been able to duplicate. That's an interesting idea because that Roman concrete is something special, right? Like it's, it's like pretty darn skookum. Like it, uh, like they could do it underwater and all kinds of crazy stuff. Like they built that big harbor out of concrete and, and uh, it works. And so there's something about that process that they use, the chemicals that they used in that process that actually um, that actually like make it work um, underwater. That's really cool. That's actually a really cool idea. I'm sure it's in one of the scrolls at the Library of Alexandria, and we could probably find it when we go back and, and start scrolling through the library. We'll probably find Carl Sagan there too, because he's not really dead. He just went back in time, or he went to Flatland. Either way. Um, uh, Barbie's asking, what about something that we haven't yet figured out, like the Easter Island statues? Now, the Maori statues are interesting because, like, they've been mysterious for, you know, long, long time. And, uh, turns out, like, um, I don't know, I don't know if y'all saw this. This wasn't, like, big news or anything, but they actually dug up the statues. So, it's not just a head. There's actually a full body there. Um, it's some kind of, like, totem pole. Uh, 
Uh, but there's actually like a full body underground that's been just buried over the millennia. Uh, which is interesting. Uh, it's kind of interesting, but apparently, like, yeah, apparently, like the statue, and there's statues like that all over the place, all over the South Pacific. There's there's those statues like that. It just happens that the Easter Island ones are the most famous. Um... <laughs> oh, oh, all right, all right, all right, all right. So Matt says. Matt says you go back to the Library of Alexandria, and this is this is tying back into the grandfather paradox, and I love this. That's why I'm laughing so dang hard. So, uh, so his his point is, if you go back to the Library of Alexandria, but your smartphone that you brought to take pictures of everything was the Note 8, and so the Note 8, you brought that back in time. The battery exploded, and that's what caused the library to burn down. That's brilliant. Oh man, that is what I'm talking about when I talk about like quantum certainty, like uh, like histor like it, the past is written in stone. So no matter what we do, no matter what time travel actually happens, it's already been done. So like, and that's actually a really funny. That's a really funny idea. Like like uh, there's a series in there somewhere. Like a guy goes back in time to like try to prevent all these different sorts of. Uh, sorts of tragedies and whatever like he goes back in time but he just like screws up royally every time so like all the worst stuff that happens throughout history is just because this guy is going is trying to go and fix history <laughs> like he's from this like really ridiculously dystopian future and he's trying to go back and fix everything but as he goes back and fixes it it actually makes the thing that he's supposed to go back and fix happen and that's like every week it's a new episode. It's like it's like the the most hilariously bad slapstick version of Quantum Leaf you could possibly imagine. <laughs> that would be awesome. I love it. Let's do this. Let's pin this. Somebody get me a writer. Uh, <laughs> let's do this because I want to produce this show. You heard it here, folks. You heard it here first. Oh man, that's awesome. So um, yeah. So. <laughs> Um, anyway, but about 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 that would be hilarious. That would be absolutely hilarious. Oh man. But uh, yeah, so the the Easter Island statues, like yeah, like they just chiseled them out of rock and just erosion. Well, not erosion, deposition actually. Uh, deposition just caused sand to bury them over thousands of years, and you know, buried up to their necks, and then you know grass and stuff grows on top of that, you know, over centuries. So that's why Easter Island is how it is. Um, Matt says he seriously thinks thinks that the mess of weird coincidences that resulted in the assassination of Franz Ferdinand uh, could have easily fit in that. It probably did, and that's what I'm saying. Like, like you know, it's funny. It's funny that it happened. It's funny that it happened, but it is quite possible that, like, like I said, like, if time travel already, if time travel does exist in the future, it's already happened, and because of what has gone on, that's, like, them trying to fix history, and it's all the weird, crazy stuff that you can't explain trying to fix history. Um... And that's why there's like no trace of it. And it's all these weird coincidences that should not actually happen. Like they should not actually do anything, uh, but it does. And that's like, what? Well, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. But uh, that's my thought anyway. It's not just, you know, it's not just the string of quantum uncertainty. It's not just humanity being dumb. It's, uh, it's somebody from the future going back and being dumb. <laughs> it's not just humanity at the time. It's somebody from the future, man. This is, uh, somebody get George Nori on the line. This is, uh, this is definitely some, uh, Coast to Coast AM stuff. Uh, yeah. It's aliens, aliens. But, uh, yeah. So, <laughs> I think on that bombshell, I am going to, uh, I'm going to hand it over to you guys. You guys continue this down in the comments below, down in the doobly-doo. Uh, appreciate you guys being here. It has been very fun. It has been quite a uh, quite an amusing journey here. Um, so uh, so 
Let me know what you think down in the doobly-doo. We're going to talk about this again next week. We're going to bring this back up on Facebook on Wednesday. Uh, go over to Facebook, facebook.com slash the Airborne Surfer, and uh, you'll be able to uh, you'll be able to like the page. And when we have a freeway forum next Wednesday, we're going to have um, – more of this coming in and we're going to talk about this a little bit more we'll bring in some more uh, bring in some more voices and and we'll see what's going on so guys i appreciate you being here um airbornesurfer.com uh again amazon link up there it doesn't cost you anything it helps support what we do here um <coughs> our amazon links down in the doobly-doo uh what else what else what else um airbornesurfer.com facebook.com slash the airborne surfer like subscribe share with your friends um we'll see you guys next week and same bat time same bat channel if i don't see you on wednesday i will see you right here on thursday and apparently i can schedule these so i'm going to actually post the link earlier in the day so hopefully you guys will be able to see it better um so they've got a good thing uh so that's that's all I got for you today. My name is Atari. Appreciate you being here. Till next time. Tally ho, y'all.